Chapman's our guest. I want to get into the economy, a bunch of important police state news. Bob's inside uh, scoop because he has so many connections on the Dominique uh, Strauss-Kahn situation. But finishing up with the birth certificate, Bob, you know, I mean, out of hundreds of broadcasts I do a year, every year I do five, six, seven shows on the birther issue and say, I don't know, but looks like they're covering something up. But now the way they put out this shoddy certificate, the way they ran dirty tricks against WorldNet Daily and, and, and Corsi, uh, I mean, there's no doubt that thing's fake. There's no doubt they said the last one was the long form and nothing else existed. There's no doubt Governor Abercrombie said he went and looked and couldn't find it. And then suddenly it's there. I mean, what on earth is going on? Well, they're trying to cover up. Uh, you know, this is Brzezinski and Soros who uh, put this guy in the position that he's in. Uh, they figured they could bulldoze the American people into believing that he, he was what they say he is. And now Jerome has written a book that uh, tells you that isn't the case. And this is what investigative journalism is all about and the quality of telling the truth. And it's going to be crippling. Uh, they should have thought of all this. And now you get the attack coming forward by uh, Media Matters, which is Soros's uh, uh, company or whatever they call it. And, um, and uh, you know, I, I, I also and, and went to your staff here a couple of weeks ago uh, that Media Matters was attacking G. Edward Griffith, too. And they gave me the information, which I sent on to Ed. But um, anything goes with these people, and they're going to they're going to try to rough this thing all the way through, and they are going to be unsuccessful. Well, when they get up there and say that it's crazy to question government and that we just need to believe what we're told, everybody knows government's constantly caught lying. And then, why do you think it's such a bad forgery? Because I mean, the whole thing's a joke. Well, you're right, and I'm all that over when I was first informed of its quality, not being a professional in that area. And um, either one or two things happened, and Jerome game, one of them, they had to rush to get this thing done, had to be done within their own circle, and they picked what they thought was the best person to do it. Uh, and as you pointed out, had they gone to the FBI or the CIA, particularly the CIA, uh, they could have made them uh, a wonderful forgery. And, uh, but they didn't do that. I just think they're dumb. For those that don't know, the British and U.S. forgery departments of the intelligence services keep every known uh, typewriter used, uh, copies of old paper or original reams. They have whole warehouses this is admitted they can fake digital cards, they can fake identities, they do surgeries uh, so that people can pass. I mean, I mean, they're masters of this. They would have, out of whole new paper, made a perfect fake. But instead, we get something that looks like it was made by Mickey Mouse. It's a good way to put it. <laughs> so what, they That's just right. had some good fella, I guess, one of their little, you, you know, mafia buds to do it. Well, whoever, uh, I think the point is uh, Jerome uh, is going to, in finality, prove that the President of the United States is not who he says he is, he's not an American citizen, and so on and so forth. And uh, that could take him down from office. Um, then we get Joe Biden, if you can believe that. But uh, that's the way uh, the changes of power are in the Western world. Uh, and have been for some time. And I, I expect that uh, uh, there'll be, you know, uh, all sorts of things in the media. The media, of course, is committed, so they have to uh, defend him. But in the final analysis, uh, uh, he's going to be out of office, I think. Well, that's right. Once the media unquestioningly two and a half years ago bought the other certificate as the total proof and the end-all be-all, uh, and then once they committed to this new lie... Uh, they don't have a choice. They're going to continue digging the hole deeper for themselves. That's right. Um, the old adage I learned when I was a little boy, you tell a lie, you got to tell 20 more to make up for it. It's hardly worth it. And that's why my whole life I've tried to tell the truth each and every time because I don't want that burden 
of having to worry about the lies I got to tell. Well, exactly. That's what's so great about doing the research, telling the truth, is that you don't have to remember anything. I mean, you're just going with what the research is, and it's right there. You're not having to remember what you said before about this or that. That's why so many of these politicians have got to read off teleprompters. Is because they're just complete liars, and they've got to have experts that go over it and make sure the lies have continuity. I want to shift gears now with Bob Chapman of the International Forecaster when we come back and run over a host of news. Also look at how they're trying to suppress gold and silver. Uh, also, government orders YouTube to censor protest videos. This is confirmed. Just so many incredible developments. Uh, Going yeah. back now to Bob Chapman. Bob, I've got all this economic news. Uh, China is now the top gold bug. Financial Times uh, is reporting. The Wall Street Journal is also reporting. Mexico buying massive amounts. Meanwhile, the system with papers trying to suppress it. Uh, we've got the currency wars accelerating. Bloomberg's reporting. They have a uh, HBO special coming out that literally worships Henry Paulson as our savior headline. Paulson cast as stoic savior at HBO. Big uh, a Wall Street uh, saga. I mean, this is just incredible. Uh, we've got uh, China continuing to dump uh, its purchases of Treasury notes. What's happening in the economy right now? Well, uh, first of all, uh, people think that by the end of June, and these are usually people who are professionals, that um, uh, what is called uh, QE3, uh, QE2, is going to terminate. And uh, the bottom line, very simply, is they terminate, the economy totally collapses. So they have to keep it up, and they will do it under another name. They'll dream something up. they got people working 24-7 doing just such things. And so it's going to continue. That is what the stock market's telling you, and that's why in the Dow it moved from 10800 to uh, 12800 uh, They're discounting and uh, the news ahead of time, and the market normally does that. Because the insiders know what's going on. Who are they? Uh, J.P. Morgan Chase, Goldman Sachs, Citi Group, uh, Deutsche Bank, HSBC, and on and on. So they know what's going on because they create the news. They don't get inside information. They make inside information. And so that's why you've seen what you've seen in the market defying reality. And I think probably once it becomes known that QE3 is in process, then the market will probably start to come up because all the good news will be out. Uh, continued spend, uh, spending of money and not a collapse in the economy. Uh, gold and silver uh, are going to continue upward uh, based upon, number one, gold being the only money in the world, and that's been proven over the last two and a half years in its head-to-head -head fight with the dollar and all other currencies as well. And uh, both silver and gold in the future will move higher. We just had a big man-made uh, correction, and uh, that will be overcome. Is this the bottom? I don't know, but I don't care. You just keep on buying because it's the only safe place to be. It probably is a bottom. And uh, we had a very good day today in the market, and it's continuing. And uh, and so there are a lot of peripheral things going on. Uh, the book by Jerome Corsi explaining uh, the uh, birth of uh, the person who calls himself president. And, uh, and then there's other things outside that. Now, Alex, as you know, I've been talking for the last couple of years about the possibility of government doing something to or with uh, 401ks and, and IRAs. And I think that's getting closer and closer. Uh, tip off here recently was we don't have the money to carry us up to August the second when supposedly we're going to have an extension of the uh, the funding of debt. Um, so what government has done instead of putting money into the retirement program like they're supposed to, they're not going to do that. They're going to use it to run the government. So what they're doing essentially is, I would say, illegally robbing the pension plans of government employees. Now, uh, the next step from there is the $6 trillion, which are in retirement plans as 401ks and, and uh, IRAs. By the way, let me, just, let me just briefly interrupt you because the very same international combine 
that is robbing Greece, uh, now Spain, Portugal, uh, trying to rob Iceland, uh, Ireland. They're on record last week saying that the governments are saying now we're going to take your private pension funds and selling it like that's welfare, your own pension fund. And we've got mainline Republicans pushing, taking and cutting the pensions of public workers and union people when they've money's already been paid into that. It's just been stolen out the back door. So they're selling this austerity and they're also going to go after the private pension fund. So folks need to get through their heads. We need to write off the quadrillion plus in derivatives uh, and, 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 and not go out and uh, rob the unions and, and, and the government pension funds. Because here's the other problem. They're going to play all of those public workers off against everybody else because they're going to be fighting for their financial future. Uh, when at the end of the day, we should be looking at the bankers first. Well, you're right, and uh, the, the tactics will be um, formulated in a way that people will think it's good for them. Uh, we had a report come out and uh, uh, in February called the Annual Report on Middle Class, and um, in there it, it talked about guaranteed retirement accounts. Of course, that's by the government, and the government would run the money, and that means that they would use the money that presently was in IRAs and 401ks to fund the government. And that would be one of the ways that they would fund the shortfall in the purchasing of Treasury and agency paper. Agency is Fannie, Freddie, Ginny, and FHA bonds. And so they're going to try to relieve some of the pressure on the Fed, like you know, under QE3, they'll have to come up with a minimum of $1.7 trillion. And if they're going to replace what stimulus is not going to make available from the legislature, they're going to have to come up with $2.3 to $2.5 So they're trying to relieve them of that problem in part. And remember, they're and so already robbing everybody's pension funds, public, private, and savings with the inflation. What is the real unemployment at from your research? And what is the real inflation at? And where is inflation going? We now see they had a Walmart a month ago, Ben Bernanke this week. They're now admitting, hey, inflation is going up, but it's no big deal. Well, it's around 10%. And um, last uh, May, uh, I made a prediction that we would have QE2 and stimulus on the same order of QE1, and we would have QE3. And I also said that inflation by the end of this year, now this is going to be a year and a half by the time we get there, would be 14% of higher. Right now it's around 10%. The government's talking 2.6%. And uh, uh, this is only this year. But everybody knows QE1. that's pure bull, Bob. Milk, eggs, uh, meat, uh, fuel, uh, uh, power bills, phone bills, everything skyrocketing. And that's true, and it's going to continue as long as they continue to do what they're doing. And next year, we'll probably see 25 to 30 percent inflation, and they'll say it's 5 or 10 percent, whatever it is. And, of course, that won't be true. And then if we have this QE3, which I think we will, we'll be looking at maybe 50 percent. By the way, Bob, now, you've been right about 97 percent of the time that I've been reading you for 14, 15 years and interviewing you for close to that. that that's very frightening because you predicted everything that's happened so far to this point. You're saying 25, 30 percent next year. There's a good chance of that if they continue to do what they're doing. And then the following year. We could get up to 50%, which is called hyperinflation. It's the uh, the bottom edge, the beginning of hyperinflation. Some hyperinflations go two or 3,000 times. But, you know, for America, 50% uh, is god-awful. Well, they can't and give Wall so Street I a haircut. I mean, they can't, me? I mean, they can't give Wall Street a haircut. They're not going to do that. They're not going to ever be able to cut enough government uh, and entitlements to ever fix this. So it looks like it's a foregone conclusion. Absolutely. And it's part of their plan to bring everything down so that everybody will say, please save me, feed me, put me in one of your camps so I'll be safe, and uh, I'll accept world government. But and you, know, you, you spoke about Wall Street not accepting. Uh, that's part of what the uh, Dominic Strauss-Kahn uh, affair is about. He said, look, let's help these nations. Uh, let's not loot them. 
Uh, let me stop you. Exact words he used. Let me stop you because I want to reset here, and I want you to uh, take your time on this because that was my next point. Do you concur with Dr. Paul Craig Roberts that this is a setup? I mean, it's admitted that his head spin doctor and one of their campaign heads uh, for Sarkozy did release the arrest before it even happened. Uh, that I mean, that's admitted. They admit that. Uh, and it's admitted uh, that he that they're acting like he's already guilty. I mean, I don't like this guy. I don't like globalist. But he had said that we're getting r diminishing returns. We've ground the third world so bad that we might want to start forgiving some of this fiat debt. I mean, uh, what's your intel on what happened with Khan? Well, of course, uh, Wall Street's anathema to that because they've been looting since 48. Actually, the uh, IMF was formed in 44, but it really didn't function till 48. Um, and, you know, Craig, uh, Paul Craig Roberts is correct. And it's as simple as that. I have a great insight into French politics. And the reason why is I followed it very deeply for years. I speak French, and I went to the Université de Genève. And um, one of my good friends, I haven't talked to him for a long time, is Jean-Marie Le Pen. Uh, he's what well, he used to be the head of the National Front. And his daughter Marina is now the head of the National Front. And I've known her since she was a teenager because I used to go to their home and have dinner and things like that. And I noticed today that uh, Madame Legrand uh, is being uh, talked about to be the head of the IMF. Now, the reason they would do that is she's the natural run one to run on the Socialist Party ticket. And she would be the next in line after Strauss Khan. But they want her out of the way because they want Sarkozy to win. And so right now, Sarkozy, you're going to get like 35% of the vote prior to all this happening. And Marina's got 21, which is very high uh, for them because uh, when Le Pen ran for the presidency, he only got 19%. He was, he was um, disemboweled, if you may, uh, from a political standpoint. Anyway, uh, she's brilliant. Uh, she was trained as an attorney, uh, a criminal attorney at that. And she's the sweetest, nicest, one of the nicest kids I ever met. But anyway, uh, I think she's got a shot at him. And it's going to be very interesting because if the people in France say, well, we don't want this guy, and we really wanted Strauss Kahn, maybe we should have this lady as our president. And by the way, the, the, the vast guy. majority uh, of the French do believe this was a setup with uh, Dominique Strauss Kahn. Without question, in my comment all week has been the same as yours. I don't care for him, uh, and uh, I never have, and I won't go into it, but there's no question. A man's a billionaire, long, long line of very influential, wealthy, famous people, and uh, he has a $3,000 suite, uh, which he paid for, as far as I know. And um, men like that do not pursue the things that he's been accused of. It's as simple as that. And he was set up. And they probably they were intelligence agencies involved. Et cetera, well, that guy could order up any women he wanted, and that's what they do. But sometimes these globalists do go wild like this. My issue is he may have even done it. They've removed the protection from him now. Either or. And it really doesn't make any difference at this point because he's out of the IMF. He won't run for the presidency, and their goal was to get rid of him in that powerful position, and he's gotten been gotten rid of. Well, it's admitted and in the I French papers. I'm sorry for him because he's in a hardball league, and he knew that. Well, Khan, it's admitted that Sarkozy put him as the head of the IMF be, uh, to get him out of politics. Probably. Probably. Well, I'll tell you what's going on in Europe right now. Anything can happen, and Marina could win. All right, well, looking at what's happening with Europe, uh, you predicted three years ago that it would start in Ireland, Portugal, and spread, and that the euro would die. Where are we right now on that front? Well, um, Greece is not cooperating. Uh, Samaras, uh, who's the head of the other party, uh, the one that's not in power, uh, which is Pompadreo's group, his father was president before him during the 80s, uh, terrible crook, number one, and a, an ardent communist. 
um, uh, it's not going to work. Uh, the other party is not going to go along with their let's steal everything in the country program. And uh, they're going to have to give them a partial default. And that'll last about two years, and the problem will be back again. And then they've got to deal with Ireland and, and uh, Portugal, who are in the same positions. Uh, France is dread, uh, excuse me, Spain is in dreadful condition. Hundreds of thousands of homes empty. And, uh, of course, you probably have heard that about 50,000 people from Europe bought homes in Spain and then were told they didn't own them. And there's been a big fight over this. You don't see it in American media. No, there's, there's huge uh, protests going on right now. Uh, things are really heating up into a major powder keg. Well, we're going to go five minutes into the next hour to take a few of your phone calls. Appreciate everybody holding. There's a bunch of news I didn't even get to, and I'll have to cover it. It's Sunday. Government orders YouTube to censor protest videos. And it's, uh, the legal actions are being taken. It says this content is unavailable in your country to government removal by request. Uh, TSA, more abuses there. New biometrics technology allows government to know what you're thinking. Paul Joseph Watson, that's the claim. It's just quackery where they can then claim you're a terrorist because the computer says so. You know, like lie detectors were proven to be a fraud decades ago, but still people went to the gas chamber for it. Uh, also, uh, University Campus Watch Citizen Spy Program partners with Threat Fusion Center to report suspicious activity. Um, they're integrating those into the local spy centers. Uh, Big Sis and DHS push ID program for travelers. You're still going to get groped, but now they'll openly decide whether you get groped or not by giving you a special card. That's part of these internal passports. Uh, Bob Chapman, it is just getting crazier and crazier. What do you make of the U.S. Supreme Court and the Indiana Supreme Court, particularly the Indiana, openly saying in the decision that the Fourth Amendment was evil and that a great evil has been defeated and now the cops will come in your house for any reason or no reason at all. I mean, uh, these people are just consciously being evil. Well, that's right. And uh, there are policemen, law enforcement people, uh, much to our chagrin, who are criminals. And that's been proven over and over again. And so people who have their house invaded by police because they have to pick their house uh, might find things missing from their homes. Um, uh, for some time, we've had uh, uh, policing organizations in different states preying uh, upon people uh, by stopping their vehicles and then searching them. And if they have any money, uh, say five or ten thousand dollars or more, they confiscate it. It's been going on for a long time, but now that the states are so hard up for money, uh, they're making a racket out of it, and they. And they admit it. In fact, I, I have a, a video in tomorrow's issue explaining that uh, in detail. Uh, very, very interesting. Well, that's gone it on for a long time, Bob. But now they're even taking a couple hundred bucks and, and from old ladies and stuff and then admitting they're doing it. I mean, uh, no judge, no jury, no arrest. I mean, it's just it's just total highway robbery. And the police chief is told was asked uh, in, in Tennessee. Um, uh, what happens? Uh, do these the policemen lose their job if they don't find lots of money? And he said they could. So, I mean, this is a criminal enterprise. It, it's unbelievable. Well, that's going to be in tomorrow's issue. Yeah, let's be well. clear. Let's be clear. And we posted the video a few days ago on InfoWars. I've seen it. And I should have played that effect. I mean, that's what I'm saying, folks. There's so much. I'm at, used to cops, corrupt cops did this quietly. Now they go on TV and are proud of it. Go ahead, Bob. And you're absolutely right. They are. And they think it's okay. Anything goes. And uh, I'm, I also cover at the beginning of the U.S. section tomorrow what we've talked about uh, regarding the commandeering, actually, in the future, uh, the distinct possibility of that, uh, 401Ks and IRAs. And there's another bill been uh, presented, uh, SEAL, uh, it's called SEAL, 401k savings accounts. This is something that they've dreamed up so they can keep people from getting their money out of their 401ks. And they're also talking I mean, nationally. 
They're also talking nationally about another withholding where they take it and claim it's a government 401k for you, like Social Security, but you have Social Security and this new private one. That's right. And it flows into the general fund, and they steal it all. Well, why shouldn't they? Unbelievable. I mean, why shouldn't they, Bob? They've got cops coast to coast taking money out of old ladies' purses. I mean, it, it's just insane. Back in one minute, five more minutes with Bob Chapman. We'll jam in a few of your phone calls. I want to get a free complimentary copy, of digitally or hard copy, of the latest international forecaster. You can call 1-800-686-2237, 1-800-686-2237 when you call Midas Resources. I wish I could get to all these calls, but let's try to jam in some. Stan and PA, you're on the air. Thanks for holding. You're on the air with Bob Chapman. Thank you very much, uh, Alex. I just I I was on hold for heck an hour and a half at least um, regarding the uh, the pre tribulation issue that you uh, brought up earlier. Is that all right if I talk about? Yeah, that? no, but we won't have time. You don't have to preface it. Yeah, uh, people saying that the world's gonna uh, the rapture is tomorrow, uh, and that's and these same groups do this over and over again, and it and, and it's uh, idiocy. Uh, go ahead. I, I'm, I'm the founder of a, of a small uh, disability ministry, 501c, tax-exempt nonprofit, and we deal with this all the time. And really, that's an outgrowth of the prosperity gospel. And, and shortly uh, uh, defined, the prosperity gospel is name it and claim it. In other words, if I, in Jesus' name, if I believe I should be driving a Mercedes-Benz, well, I claim it in Jesus' name. And if they, you know, in regards to suffering, which you were getting to earlier... Uh, they believe that suffering only happens because one of two reasons, and that's because it's either the devil's fault or it's sin in that person's life. Now, I had a daughter who, at two, she stopped talking. At two and a half, she stopped walking. At two and three quarters, the seizure started. And she had two disease states, Batten disease and uh, Williams syndrome. Long story short, we actually, we're, we're actually receiving a patent for our work. We extended her life five years. She, she passed on... Oh. Uh, about two and a half years ago, and it, this is for God's glory, um, and her life was for God. Um, because when they, the disciples came upon uh, the blind man, they said, hey, Jesus, who sinned, this man or his parents? And Jesus said, neither sinned. This man was born this way for the glory of God, and then he healed him. Yeah, um, so That's right. Heard- Nobody can calculate God's plan. I, Stan, I'd love to talk more, but we're almost out of time. What do you think about these movements with the 2012 for the... Uh, People that aren't you know, religious to buy into end of the world. Christian groups, uh, Catholic, Protestant pushing it. I mean, do you agree with me, Bob, that it's a way to just get people to think it's all over? So why should they be involved in anything and just lay down? Yes, and it's an ultimate distraction. There's nothing closer to people than their religion. And it, it, to distort it is very powerful. Yeah, I mean, I'm just sick and tired of it. I mean, I mean, let's say the world's going to end next month. You're still supposed to stand up against evil and corruption. It's the ultimate cop out. That's right. So you got to keep on doing what you're doing, and if it ends, it ends. That's too bad. Well, they've only had this doctrine in the last 150 years, and I know you've studied history. How many times have people laid down to tyrants thinking it's the end of the world? Oh, it goes back for centuries. Look at the early Christians. And, and who knows before that we don't have, you know, complete histories of, of things that happened um, perhaps 200 years and further before the birth of Christ. The great library in uh, Alexandria was wiped out by fire, uh, probably had most of the world's history in there. Yeah, it did. Uh, really, it's, 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 it's a way to give up. And, and, and I see this. It in, certainly is. I see it in secular people. I see it in other religions other than Christianity. To so just say, "Oh, the world's over," so I'm not going to do anything. I mean, it, it's. I call it the ultimate loser pill. It's just I'm just giving up. Well, we try to help those people and do the best we can doing it. Well, you watch. The world isn't going to end tomorrow. The rapture isn't going to happen tomorrow, and we're going to be the discredited ones because we're right, Bob. And that's okay. That's a burden that we have to carry. Bob, it was great having you on this week, and I look forward to having you on with us uh, next Friday ahead of the uh, holiday weekend. And be safe, my friend. We really appreciate you there at the internationalforecaster.com. Well, thank you very much, and thank you all for listening. We really appreciate it. We do. And, and folks are waking up, Bob. The, the awakening's happening faster and faster. I, I, we're breathing down the ne- their necks, as you say. 
All right, buddy. We'll talk to you soon. Great job to the crew. Everybody have a great weekend. I'll see you back Sunday, 4 to 6 p.m. Sorry to all the other callers. Uh, I didn't even get to a lot of the news today, but I'm getting better about it. Keep watching InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. Keep spreading the word. We're supposed to be the salt of the earth, folks.